Yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert. Let's Spoiler. talk about... Spoiler. Because just Friday this week was the season finale for season two. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you kick it off, man. Yeah, man. It was a fucking amazing. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Wow. Would recommend. Not okay. ghetto in the least. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was so good. It gives... I don't want to get that far that fast, but everything leading up to the end was just great. It was action packed all the way through. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was some weird dialogue there at the beginning, but uh, they quickly turned that around and they just stormed Moff Gideon's light cruiser. And it was just, it was girl power done right. Yeah, I I was thinking that. I had a thought and I was like, there are a lot of women in this crew. Yeah, exactly. It got like half. Yeah, it got half. They got halfway through the ship where I was like, oh shit. These are all women kicking ass and yeah. doing it well and doing it right. And it's not an end game moment where it's just like, oh, look, here's a shot of all the girls. Yeah. Girls get it done. Even though Captain Marvel could have did all that shit by herself. Yeah. Girls get it done. Yeah. Thanks, so. the boys. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the boys did it really well, too. So I, yeah. I agree with you in the beginning. I didn't like the only thing I don't. And I mean, maybe this is just a, a personal quirk. I don't like that the go-to for girls get it done is them being like overly posturing and macho and tough like they're Mm -hmm. they're presenting traditionally male but like the toxic side the Mm -hmm. whole thing the whole back and forth between them and boba fett like just giving him a bunch of shit and then fighting him in the bar i'm like what are you doing and the fact that she even let it go on even for a half a second like the leader did i think what they were trying to do is set up Bo-Katan, trying to set her up not as a villain but as an antagonist mm-hmm. because she's she's sorry oh. she's in the clone war series yeah and rebels so there's probably some, some history there was she bad in that series I, i'm not sure i'm sure she's like more of a anti-hero type of you know whatever side fits her agenda she's gonna this show whatever's gonna get me that dark saber baby <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this This show tied into the Clone Wars way more than I thought it did. Now I need to go back and watch Clone Wars, I feel Man. like. Which is yeah. probably Disney Plus's idea. They're like, yeah, now we're going to get a bunch of people to go back yeah. and watch this other show we got. So I'm going to kind of need to. And th- this last episode solidified the timeline we were in because I was always fuzzy about it. You mm-hmm. know, I knew it was post the original trilogy and not the prequels, the original trilogy. So right. it was Four after yeah, Luke Skywalker and the crew saved the day. But I didn't know how far past that point because it didn't seem like they were fully established with the New Order or whatever. Right. So I knew it was kind of somewhere in between there. Mm -hmm. But this one definitely solidified it up. So, yeah, they're on that uh, ship kicking ass. And the plan is most of the crew go through and fight to get to the bridge to get to Moth. What's his name? Moff Gideon. Yeah, the main bad guy. Moth Gus. Moth Gus. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, Moth Gideon. And... Meanwhile, the Mandalorian, he will sneak in after they've made a big ruckus and just go straight to the holding cell to get the child, to get Grogu. And I knew Moff Gideon was going to be waiting for him there in that cell. Because I think Moff knew what was up. You could tell from the very beginning, he didn't look surprised at all. There's subterfuge with Well, he shouldn't have been. Because from the last episode, Mando sent him that message. He was like, I'm coming. (laughs) Let him know I was coming. And I was like, why would he? do that it made for a real badass scene but strategically it doesn't make any sense at all no it didn't make any sense it was like he was like i don't know who you are i don't know what you want i can tell you that i have a certain set of skills right exactly (laughs) (laughs) why are you letting him know you're on to him my getting was like good luck (laughs) right i got dark troopers baby so they have that standoff i thought it was interesting that moth was like look i already got what i want from the child you can just take him and go and, and I believed like, right. him. I believed him too. That was, was like, good acting that's, right there. That's Giancarlo. I know, right? Flexing. He was like, I don't give a shit. You can go. And yeah, then as soon as he turned his all. back, man, he he attacked. I mean, Mando was ready. Mando, was, this is not his first rodeo. He's been attacked mm. before. He knows how it goes. In fact, that seems like this show is always just somebody trying to get the drop on him. You know? Yeah. yeah. But uh, and he was he was swinging that saber, man. He was, yeah, he was. going for it. I was actually watching a... Uh, youtube channel that was reviewing the episode and they said mm-hmm. that he broke like four or five dark sabers <laughs> on set because he was just going so hard yeah in that scene. no but it made it, for a yeah. great fight scene it reminded me yeah. of the kind of visceral fight scene they were going for in 
the original trilogy that they kind of messed up and made too many flourishes in the prequels. And then they kind of they arrived at somewhat of a middle ground in the newer movies. Mm-hmm. But I like it when, you know, there's stakes, emotions have been built up. You understand clearly what both people are trying to do. And they're not just doing some weird choreographed dance like in the prequels. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they were swinging at each other. They were going yeah. for it. Like and, the Obi-Wan and a Grievous fight. Well, yeah. great. It's it's just a lot, and it's real choreographed, and there's nothing really behind it. Yeah. Other than watch. It's just spectacle for spectacle's sake. Exactly. Yeah, -hmm. yeah, this had stakes to it. You were worried about Grogu. You were worried about, you know, Mandalorian, and it was great. That fight, and also the one where he fought that one dark trooper while he was trying to stop the other ones. And the fact that he struggled so much with that dark trooper, I was like, if the rest of them get in there, they're all going to die. I thought they were going to die anyways, because I was looking at all the characters, and I was like, there's too many characters here, and those dark troopers are powering up too quickly. Someone's going to die. (laughs) (laughs) I I didn't know that he was going to do the airlock thing, trap them, and then kind of blast them all out. I was like, that's really smart. But he could barely handle one. He weakened the armor with his flamethrower enough to where he can take mm-hmm. that best car spear and like separate the the head which yeah. why isn't that a thing with robots i don't know why are there so many exposed like uh, why would you put the vitals in the head put the vitals in the the chest parts so they can keep fighting if they, they have a limb separated including their head come on now yeah it's like you don't you don't need to simulate a human yeah you don't have to put the cpu yeah. in the brain part we're all yeah. trained to go for the brain <laughs> Put the exactly. CPU in the butt or something. Nobody's trying to shoot you. Right. <laughs> what? Your head is off, but you're still fighting. It's because my CPU's in my ass. <laughs> put, put that CPU Some animation. and <laughs> shove it up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> shove it up your butt. <laughs> Thanks, Stanley. <laughs> right. We love you, Stanley. Does he have a mustache or no? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, I love that episode where they were trying to yeah. guess whether or not he had a mustache. But anyways, back to Mandalorian. Yes. You have that standoff, and then, of course, they get him to the bridge. Then all those dark troopers come back. Yes. Oh, no. And they close the storm doors, but they're, like, bashing down the doors. And Moth Gideon, he's got a blaster close by that he covered up with his cape. So, you know, he's about to shoot somebody. And he's like, they're going to come in here, and they're going to kill everybody but me and the child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that baby. That's right. And then they get that beacon that... A ship just came into range, and you see it's a, uh, what do they call those things? An X-Wing? An X-Wing. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's the Jedi! I, I didn't even I, think, at first, at first I was like, oh shit, the Republic's coming. We're saved. A single <laughs> ship? No, I knew Well, it was I Jedi. mean, I saw one X-Wing, and I'm thinking there's going to be a bunch following it. Oh, but, I see. Yeah. That's the beauty of this show being week to week. Yeah. Because I totally forgot Grogu called out for a Jedi. Totally I'm, I'm assuming that you skip you skip the recap in the beginning. Yeah, I skipped the recap. We watched the recap. That's probably why it was on my mind. I was like, okay, yeah, he just yeah. called out for a Jedi because the recap was like very focused on the fact that Grogu sent a message out and that a Jedi right. probably heard it. That's, that's so, the yeah. thing about recaps. <laughs> and the Jedi, man, that Jedi was badass. Ooh, tearing that shit up. I was like, oh, Green shit, saber. <laughs> yeah, the face was covered up. And, that, and again... I was trying to guess, but also not really knowing what the timeline was, right? So I'm like, yeah, it'll, it'll only well, be a handful of people, depending on the timeline. And yeah, and I'm thinking Obi-Wan, but I'm like, wait, Obi-Wan's dead at this point. <laughs> so it can't be Obi-Wan. Yeah, it's no. It's not Ahsoka. Who yeah, because she it? already, yeah, and it wasn't her lightsaber or her style, and she already said right. she wasn't going to train him. So, but this guy went through two legions of dark troopers and just handed like them their asses. Nothing. Like, they these guys built up to be so badass, Mando can't even handle them. And this Jedi comes in, crushing them with the Force, whacking them this way and that, lightsaber just going right through their armor. It was insane. Yeah. And then we see the, the reveal. green lightsaber. Man. And you know, at that point, if you didn't know before, you know now, this is Luke Skywalker back. So did you guess it was Luke Skywalker just from the lightsaber? Oh, yeah. Even then, I wasn't sure. I've seen Return of the Jedi so many times as a child. Fair enough. What did you think about how they de-aged his face? I mean, like everybody's saying, it could have looked better, but I was shocked that they even did that. Yeah. Because I thought for sure they would have, like, recast somebody Mm. that looked like him or... That's a lot of money I don't know, kept his face covered. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I was like, it's Luke. It is Luke. So, Vicky is watching it. is catching up. Uh-huh. She was in the room doing Nora's hair, and I didn't want her to look at the screen, so she wasn't looking at the screen. And I had my headphones in, and I couldn't react the way I wanted to. Yeah, because <laughs> I wanted to like start crying and 
screaming and hollering. Oh, it was everything. It's everything that Luke Skywalker fans wanted mm-hmm. from Star Wars. It's what we wanted from The Last Jedi to see Luke at the height of his powers. Just kicking ass, Just, yeah. Yes, that's all we wanted. And they gave it to us in John Favreau and Dave Filoni. Killing it. Oh my God. Star Wars. It, I keep hearing people saying Star Wars is good again. And I'm like, no, Star Wars is good now. Like, yeah. it's good now. Because if I'm completely honest, this is my opinion, but Star yeah. Wars has never been a really good series. It's been really impactful. But yeah. as far as like, you know, story and presentation and all that, everything that involves making a movie that hasn't been like really good. It was fun, but not good. If that I think sense. the original trilogy was good because I remember seeing it when I was young before the prequels. Because that's the thing. There's an age gap between us. Like, by the time you probably got into Star Wars, the prequels are already there, right? Um, no, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I How watched, old were um, you when you watched the original Star Wars? I was probably like six or so. Okay. And then I would rewatch it throughout. And I didn't mm-hmm. see the prequels as soon as they came out. Fair enough. I had to wait till like, they were like on cable or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It was... I obviously didn't see them in the 70s because I wasn't born yet. It wasn't until the 80s that I watched them. But they were still very relevant back in the 80s. And even at that point, even though that they're based off heavily based off of serials and certain films, you know, obviously the the influences Star Wars has, it wears on its sleeve. But it was still presented in such a way that there was nothing else really like it. There's a lot of imitators, but nobody can really kind of reach that level of storytelling and that level of fun and adventure. And Mm -hmm. a lot of other movies were coming out with that same type of vibe. So it was just a good time, you know. A lot of Spielberg stuff, you know, a lot of a lot of Lucasfilm, you know, Goonies, Indiana Jones, just different adventure serials and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the best. So I, I think it was good then. I think it got diminished by the prequels, kind of losing the spirit of that and really going yeah. into spectacle. And I think that they've been trying to rekindle with these movies, but they've been really struggling with pleasing new fans and old fans and just not quite hitting the mark. I thought the the newer films were okay, but I under, I completely understand a lot of the hate that they get from fans. I'm like, yeah, okay. yeah. Last but, it, but by I then, I've been kind of divested from Star Wars, but I'll agree with you here. The Mandalorian has reinvested me in this universe. Like, The Mandalorian yeah. is probably one of the best, if not the best, Star, Star Wars, Wars properties yeah. that exists. Period. Bar none. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm excited to see what possibly... It's next with all these shows that they've announced and everything. But, uh, okay. yeah, we, uh, just gonna quickly wrap up The Mandalorian. Cause we've been talking about this for a while, but it's so good. Uh, Luke reveals himself and Mandalorian and Grogu have this touching, heartfelt goodbye. And I almost cried. I've watched so many reactions of grown men crying at this. <laughs> Mando takes off his helmet. Yeah, to show Grogu his face, time. which is yeah, huge. Fir- yeah. Cause it's the first time he's done it. Just to do it. Yeah. Not because he had to or anything, but he wanted his son to touch his face and see his face. Because Groku's never seen his face on the show. No. No, he hasn't. So this is the first time he's seen his face, man. It's crazy. And it was was sweet because it felt like they were connected. I mean, before Ahsoka, he asked her how she understood him. She goes, well, I can connect with him. You could, too. He tried. And... I feel like when he reached out and touched Mando's helmet, like at that moment they were connected and he understood like, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, let me take this off and we can look at each other one last time, that type of thing. And yeah. it was, it was a really super touching moment. And it helps that Grogu is like the cutest thing, this mm-hmm. side of our toddlers. <laughs> like, right. He is yes. so cute. Yeah. Vicky it's calls un- him it's unbelievable. <laughs> Go- Gogurt. Yeah. Yeah. I Go-Gurt. called him Gogurt or uh, Yo Girl. <laughs> Yo Girl. Yeah, I was like purposely yeah. messing up his name after they revealed it on that that uh, episode, and and Kristen was cracking up. But then uh, Mando says goodbye. Luke Skywalker takes Baby Yoda, and R two D two's there too, just for some extra nostalgia. And then it fades to black. And mm-hmm. Then we get a post credit scene with Jabba the Hutt's palace, mm-hmm. and uh, Bib Fortuna, who was Jabba's right hand man, in had taken over Jedi. obviously after yeah, Jabba died. He's gained yeah. some weight. He has gained some weight. A little bit. Well, you know, sitting yeah. on that throne, he kind of needs to. He needs to his fill little, up yeah, those little, big Jabba uh, shoes. His little head tentacle is thick. <laughs> so thick, baby. Yeah. And uh, what is her character's name? Oh, the assassin that is indebted yeah, to Boba assassin. Fett. I can never remember. Yeah. She's a newer character, I feel like. Unless she's been in the yeah. Clone Wars too, which I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Well, the assassin but yeah, she busts in. Yeah. Yeah, taking people out. 
Mm-hmm. And then Boba comes down, shoots Bib Fortuna. They have, they, then, have, they have short words, meaning that he goes, hey, how's it going? I was going to, yeah. I, I can't believe you're alive, dead. <laughs> bang, bang. And then he sits on the throne, and I'm like, Boba the Hutt, baby. <laughs> yep. Boba the Hutt. And then it and said, then, the, the Book yeah. of Boba Fett 2021. Yep. And at first I was like, oh, shit, Boba's getting his own show. And then I watched all these other videos. So I was like, oh, the third season of Mandalorian is probably going to be Boba Fett season. Oh, you think? Yeah. And it makes sense because all of these episodes are called chapters. Uh-huh. And obviously Mando's story, Jin Jar, Din Jarin, whatever his name is, his story is kind of complete because Grogu's gone. Yeah. And that was his whole arc. And he, he like like joy. He likes joys. He's kind of given thrown away his uh Mandalorian creed, so to speak, by taking off his helmet and all that. Interesting. And his story's kinda come to an end. So calling it the Book of Boba Fett and all the Mandalorian episodes have been chapters and then introduce all these Mandalorian characters, the Mandalorian could just be a series about different Mandalorians going forward. Different chapters. Huh. I didn't think of it that way, but that's really an interesting take. I wonder if that's how they're going to go. I will say I, this. I, his story to me isn't completed 100% because he's got not. that saber. Yeah. There, there's that whole challenge, right, yeah. between him and the other Mandalorian leader that needs to take place because he was like, I yield. And uh, yeah. they're like, you can't. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But that's a whole other thing. This is, but yeah, this, this is, is great. what I'm thinking is the next season is going to be Boba Fett's season. And then he's he's gonna get one season, and then the fourth season is gonna be Bo Katan season, and then we'll see the resolution yeah. of that dark saber. Could be the uh, whole conflict, but either way, I'm excited. Yeah. Great Mandalorian, 